Welcome to today's session, which is about the creation of corridor intersection models. One would want to ask as to why do we model our intersections using corridors. Modeling our intersection using corridors uh, enables us to model smarter and use minimum number of objects uh, for our intersections. And this is good in that it uh, reduces the size of our drawings and thus offers us a, a more stable um, uh, drawing environment. You know, civil 3D is quite um, prone to crashes uh, once the, the drawing size file sizes become big. And when we can do this, I think it just does help us a lot. Also, we are able to manage our baselines and assemblies uh, much better uh, when we are using uh, models and corridors. Also, you know, there are advantages though and disadvantages to all of this. The advantages being that we are using what we already have in the form of the connected alignments and the offset alignments and profiles. So we're not having to create uh, new objects in our drawings. Also, the other beauty about them is that corridors are very dynamic in nature that when there are changes, you are able to, you know, set, a, set your drawing such that your corridors, you know, uh, do update automatically or you can add, uh, update them yourself. Um, so, so, yeah, they, they just offer us that um, uh, dynamic nature. The other advantage of this is that they do allow us greater creativity. Um, so that's why we prefer using them in that way. It's also easier to draw cross sections through the intersection for the purposes of volumes and also just for pro production of the uh, sections for construction purposes. The, the advantage is though is that uh, they do require some in-depth knowledge and skill. So it's not, a, it's not the kind of thing that can just be done, you know, quickly and without due care. Uh, you know, those issues of the connected alignments and the offset alignments, you know, one would need to have quite an in-depth knowledge of those to be able to use this um, effectively. The other shortcoming would be that, you know, things like uh, pedestrian scoops can be very difficult to model, but it's not impossible, uh, but it's not, it's not as easy. So as I said, you know, um, uh, it's easy to draw the cross sections, the, the cross sections through the intersection for purposes of, um, of volumes and, and production of cross section drawings. But having said that, I think let's uh, let's show you how we do this uh, by um, going into a drawing. Let's dive in. Uh, as you can see here, we have already designed this one intersection, and today we will be looking at uh, designing this uh, second intersection. Okay, the first step will be just to tidy up this area by just uh, moving this corridor a little bit back just to open up space there. And then, okay, we come out of that. Second thing, we want to split this corridor. Uh, we wanna split this region and we wanna split it say around there. Uh, we're gonna split it again, say in that area. Okay. So now that we we have done that, um, I just wanna look at the the assemblies that we do have in this drawing. I think we will just have to use assembly number five. That's the assembly we will use through that intersection. Okay, so we've got our corridor. So let's just look at the properties of that corridor. Uh, in that region, we're gonna go here with assembly number five. Uh, let's see, yes, 
happy with that uh, as you can see it's removed all the caps um, on this side of the of the road and also the daylights because this is where we're gonna have our 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 cab return what we'll do we'll first start by creating a connected alignment uh, in here so let's first create a connected alignment and we will start there we we'll start here okay i'm happy with that okay i'm happy with the alignment label no being no labels just want to check the parameters of that 15 meters okay okay i'm happy with that let's preview it um i'm happy with that cab return okay we we want to do the second one which will be there and there we'll position it there okay see the parameters we preview it happy with that okay so now we do we do have our our baselines we'll just save this uh, and that the last thing you want to do with this thing is to suddenly lose the work that you you had done now that we have already got our connected alignments we just need to add a baseline so when we add a baseline we okay let's select the alignment this is the alignment we're adding to okay now we're happy with that uh, okay we're happy with that okay having having added that baseline next thing now will be to add a region Okay, let's add regions uh, by clicking on that baseline. We want to track where this is the point, and over there, maybe with that. And then, um, where is this point? Maybe there. Okay, and on this, we will be using assembly number three. Um, and, uh, and when for our targets on this assembly for the target surface we will use the NGL um, uh, target surface and then from a horizontal targeting perspective we will uh, use the left hand side of alignment number one we'll add that and we will be and also alignment number five we will use the center line there uh, we will add that and then from a vertical perspective we will uh, use vertical alignment number one uh on the left hand side and then we will add that and then on alignment number five we will use the vertical alignment of that and we'll add that and we go okay so there we go so now that we we have um, added that region what what we would need to do now is to just adjust the frequencies of of this um, region there it goes you can see it region number three uh, on the on the curves i'm happy and along the streets i'm happy with uh, 20 meters but here maybe let's try two meters and also what we will do is to also add uh, it to that apparent intersection point here just to complete our our 
our region because as you can see there is a gap now um, okay we're happy there we've got that uh, point and as you can see now it completes that region of ours and it just squares it up nicely so yes i think we what we will do we just need to finish up this one now we can add a baseline again which is really just a repeat and to pick it it's better to just come use that dialog box and pick it graphically because the times can be confusing when you have to look at the names at the names of these things okay now we've added the baseline now we want to modify a region we're going to add a region here let's see our starting point i'm happy with it there uh, find another point here and run away from me i'm happy with it there and again we're using assembly number three uh, okay from a target surface point of view we are again targeting the natural ground and from a horizontal targeting perspective we will go with alignment number one on the left we'll add that and then alignment number five we'll add that and then from a vertical perspective we will use alignment number one left uh, which is that we'll add and then on alignment number five we will use that vertical alignment okay so there you go so after this now we just need to edit the frequencies of uh, that region uh, edit the frequency in this region uh, just to smooth things here i want to be said on the curve two meters i want to also add oh see this one is already looking nice okay um i want that apparent intersection mm. and that apparent intersection here yeah okay so there's my region here's this other region uh okay so i just want to move this back again just to connect them okay also what i want to do on this corridor remember we had split it i need to bring it closer there just to join the two uh, so generate uh, some more okay a little bit back i'm happy with that okay uh, now that we are done with that intersection uh, maybe the best thing would be just to view it in um, an object viewer see how our intersection looks I think it looks great okay let's zoom let's zoom out again and look at our intersection it looks better it looks better it looks better so again you can um, 
Oh, okay. Still wanted to have a look. I just wanted to look at the various uh, ways you can view this. Um, okay. I want to just zoom up. That's what our intersection looks like. That's what our intersection looks like. I think it looks great. Uh, but again, you can you can change the way you wanna you wanna look at it. Uh, maybe you wanna look at it as a three D wireframe. That's what it shows you. And you can see it's now filled up every part of the intersection. The levels are tying up, same as that uh, as that one. But uh, unfortunately, yeah, we hadn't chosen that road as yet. I mean, as well on this. Uh, let me see if I can see this again. You know, let's try another view here. Let's try conceptual. Yeah, so that's your road. Now, the beauty of this is that you, you are able to show you know how this road will look to your client well before you you uh, it has been built or even finalized uh, let's try a 3d wireframe yeah so that's that's what the road will look like in here you can you can see all the elements see those will be the layer works and that is the sidewalk and this is the this is the bank Across here, you can see the um, the the cab and the sidewalk. So, if you if you really need to interact with your with your design, you know you are you are really able to to see um, what is going on. Um, look and show you there. There's your cab and there's your tin lines. Yeah. I, I hope this uh, helps you to see how you can you can design your intersections in you can model your intersections in uh, civil 3d uh, thank you very much